Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to look at um, how changes in supply and demand affect both the equilibrium price and quantity um, in the market. So um, your, our goal here today is standing on um, whether it's supply shifting, demand shifting, or whether both curves are changing at the same time. So um, first thing we need to keep in mind is we'll look at, at changes in demand. Um, that a change in demand means that the entire curve has shifted. So let's make an assumption. Let's pretend that tea and coffee are substitutes and that the price of tea has increased. Um, in which case, we want to look and see what is the effect on equilibrium price and quantity for coffee as a result of the change in the price of tea. So we would draw our coffee um, market with an equilibrium price and quantity. And because the two are substitutes, we, we know that if tea increases in price, that means that people are going to shift out of tea and into coffee so people will want more coffee regardless of what the price is because tea is relatively more expensive so we would expect the demand curve for coffee to shift to the right when it does that um, at the original equilibrium price it creates a shortage that is um, more uh, more people want coffee more coffee is demanded than is being supplied at that price as a result of the shortage, uh, we know that prices generally then have to be bid up in order to eliminate the shortage. That is, because more people want the good than is available, essentially they're going to compete with each other by offering to pay a slightly higher price until the price rises to the point at which the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. And then we'll be at equilibrium. And so we would expect both price and quantity to increase to P2 and Q2. So when demand increases, we know that equilibrium price and quantity will both increase as a result. And, and if for some reason um, demand were to shift to the left instead, then the opposite story is true. What happens then is at the original equilibrium price we have a surplus. That is, there is more of the good being produced than is demanded. And as a result, suppliers want to get rid of the extra surplus. They want to sell what they've made. And so they have to begin to gradually lower the price until we get to the point at which quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. And at that place we find that price and quantity have both decreased. So changes in demand generally cause price and quantity to go in the same direction. So increases in demand lead to increased price and quantity and decreases in demand lead to decreases in price and quantity. And if we look at supply, it's got a similar uh, story to it. So let's pretend that cotton is an input in the production of blue jeans and that the price of cotton increases. So what then happens to the equilibrium price and quantity for jeans? Well if we draw out the, the graph um, we know that because cotton is an important input into the production of genes and if that price goes up then the supply of genes in general will diminish so we'll see the supply shift to the left and when it does that at the original price we find that we have another shortage that is more people want genes than are going to be produced and as a result prices are going to have to get bid up again and so we'll see that when supply shifts to the left we see an increase in the price level but a decrease in the quantity supplied and if we do the opposite story and increase supply, then we find the opposite story is, is true. At the original price level, P1, there's now a surplus of genes. More genes supplied than are demanded. Price has to begin to come down as suppliers begin to lower price to get rid of their, their inventory. And price will decrease while the quantity um, will increase. So when we're looking at one single shift of either supply and demand, it's very clear. We can say for certain how price and quantity will, um, will change. But when we have simultaneous shifts, when both supply and demand are shifting, then we have more difficulty. Sometimes it's true that they'll both shift, and when that happens, we can't determine exactly what the effect will be on equilibrium price and quantity. Typically, we can look at, we can say, for sure whether price is changing or quantity is, cha quantity is changing, but we can't say for sure how both will change. So let's take a look at an example and, and see what I mean. Um, let's pretend that the taste for SUVs, the preferences for large uh, automobiles increases. So that would be a right shift in demand. And let's pretend that the price of steel decreases, and steel being a major component of the production of SUVs, that would be an indication that um, supply for the supply of SUVs would also increase. So in this case, both supply and demand are moving in the same direction. So what's going to happen to equilibrium price and quantity? Well, if we look at our original price and quantity, we say, okay, um, supply of, of SUVs is going to increase by some amount. Um, then we can see that price and quantity have both uh, prices decreased and quantity has increased. But now 
demand's going to kick in, and let's just say there's a little change in demand. As a result, we're going to see a decrease in the price and an increase in quantity, which is, which is what it looked like. But if I have a huge increase in demand, so that D3 intersects with S2 as our new equilibrium point, then what's happened is we've seen that actually now price has increased and quantity has also increased. So when the two curves are shifting, you can actually get two very different outcomes. We know for certain that quantity will increase, but I don't know what's going to happen to a change in price. And while you don't have to actually memorize that, that, um, that relationship, you should understand that when these two curves are shifting at the same time, um, a small shift or a big shift in one relative to the other has a huge impact on what the, the end result is on the, the change in price and quantity. And if we look at it from uh, the opposite direction, that is to say that let's look at what happens when supply moves in one direction and demand moves in another, then we get kind of the opposite story. So let's pretend that um, we're at equilibrium, initial equilibrium at P1 and Q1. And in this case, supply will shift to the left and demand will shift to the right. Um, as a result, we're at a new equilibrium point where D2 and S2 intersect with each other. And in that situation, we see that price increased and quantity decreased. But what if instead of a small change in demand, we had a large change in demand? If we were to do that and have D3 intersect at S2, which would be our, our, our new equilibrium point, then we would find that price increased from the original equilibrium, but now there's been a slight increase in the quantity um, that's being sold. And so when they're moving in opposite directions, we find that while I can say for certain what will happen to price, I can't say for certain what will happen to quantity. And so again, do you have to memorize these interactions? No. Um, you should be able to graph them. But understand that if two curves are shifting, the end result on equilibrium price of quantity is unknown. If only one of the curves is shifting, then we can say for certain what happens to price in quantity. And, and really the best thing to do in any of these problems that you're going to work through on the test, uh, on the AP test and class, what have you, is to make sure that you draw out the situation, move the curve, find where the new point of intersection is, and, and that will help you be able to identify what will happen to both price and quantity as a, as a result of a change in the market. We'll do some more practice in class, and I'll see you then.